Hey guys and welcome back. I just wanted to throw up a quick video to give you guys an idea of uh, of making sure you got your um, your local PHP stack installed uh, properly. So to, uh, to start off I'm just gonna go to my browser. I'm gonna go to where I normally go. I think this is the one I recommended to you in the course. So I go to wampserver.com. Now the first thing you'll notice when you go to this site is that it's not in English. Just click on the little English tag to uh, to take care of that. Uh, from there, it's just a matter of you going to the download page and then just pick the server. Uh, the pick the one that's appropriate for your setup. So if you're running something that's 64-bit, use a 64-bit one. If you're running something that's 32-bit, run the 32-bit uh, one. Um, Make sure you pick at least PHP uh, 5.3. Uh, you'll notice that the 5.4 is there. That's considered experimental still, so go with the 5.3. So just click on that, download it. Once it's downloaded, uh, sometimes it'll start for you automatically, sometimes it won't. Um, what you want to make sure you do is it's going to prompt you for some stuff about your... Um, opening up some parts of your uh, firewall. You want to allow that to happen otherwise you're not going to be able to connect to your server. Um, okay, so now once you actually have it running, if it doesn't start automatically you go to your start menu and find WAMP server in there and it'll be a little thing there for you to start your, uh, your thing. Over in your uh, task panel over uh, um, by your clock, uh, you will see this icon. Now when the icon is green that means that the server is running. To actually work with the server you click on it and a uh, normal click and it will do this pop-up for you. You can also right click on it and you'll get a different uh, pop-up for changing languages for being able to close it out when you're done working and stuff. So just keep that in mind. Most of the time I'm going to be using uh, the, uh, the regular click. So here is where we can start and stop everything. I'm just going to stop all my services for a second just so you can see the different colors. Uh, whenever the software is loaded but uh, the services haven't started yet, your thing is going to look red. If you start them all, you'll notice it'll go yellow first. That means some things are started, some things aren't. Then it'll go green when it's actually done. So the other thing that you have is if you want to take a look at the working directory you can click on this uh, www directory when you do that what you'll get is you'll actually whatever directory is the default directory this is installed into that will open up and you can see the files in here so if I go to open up my index file which is the one that's going to automatically load in my web browser um, I'm going to open it with my web browser for now you can see it loads like a PHP file. It looks like PHP. You see a question, um, question mark PHP with the little start tag in front of it. Right at the end, and I mean right at the end, you'll see a question mark close tag. That means everything you see in here is actually all done in PHP. You can see all kinds of weird uh, PHP stuff. This bizarre stuff here, this is actually um, embedding the graphics for this page in this page. I don't recommend you do that, <laughs> but uh, this is kind of just to get us going and it's for more illustrative purposes than everything else. Now, if I come here and instead of going to it that way, I go to it by clicking on my local host. You'll notice I'll go to local host and I will see all of this. This is the exact same stuff that you see over here. And I mean it's identical. This is just after it's been processed. This is while it's still PHP. So that's one way you can kind of look at your files to get an idea of what's uh, supposed to be going on. A uh, couple of other little things you'll have to notice. Notice here I'm going to a web server at a site called localhost. 
okay um, I'm required to go to that site if I knew the IP address of my system which off the top of my head I don't I could look it up but I'm not going to right now I'm not going to be able to get there um, I can try it by number I suppose that would be the local host number I think this is still going to get me there but if I was to go by my IP address let's see if I can find my IP address real quick I guess I am going to go there um, there we go so my local area connection is 192.168.1.108 Okay, so 1.108. Now if I try to go here, I'm going to get this thing saying it's forbidden by some sort of rule. And that is true. The reason that's forbidden is because right now I'm not considered to be online. If I click on this, you'll notice that the server will shut down again and then it'll start up again, hopefully in a second and when I click on it now I'll see a put offline button but if I go to load this now it'll load. Uh, the one good part of doing this or the one bad part of doing this depending on how you look at it is any system that can find this IP address um, and port 80 on that IP address is going to be able to load any of your web stuff that you have here okay uh, might not be able to get at your PHP my admin page yet because there's some settings inside of that that you might have to tweak to allow it but we'll get there uh, a little later anyhow I'm gonna go and put this back offline you can see it go through yellow back to green and then I come here and when I hit enter again it's forbidden but if I change back to localhost I spell it right I get back to my page. So that's really about all there is to kind of getting you guys up and going. Uh, if you're looking to um, to load a page, you drop something in this particular folder. So if you want to do some testing, if you make a subdirectory in this folder, I'll make one now. So we'll go new folder. I'll just call it test for now. Now as I scroll down here, there is no folder test, but if I reload, the test folder will be there. If I click on it, it'll bring me into that test folder and then the files that I have in that test folder will load up. If you look here, I have my test folder. I also have a couple of uh, tools. Actually, everything else must be... Ter index X cloner and they don't appear. Oh, that's good. It's actually better. They fixed that security hole. If I, uh, if I want to add a file and I'm going to just create a new text file, I guess. And uh, I'm going to call it. Oh, it's not going to let me do what I want to do here. Hang on. New. Where am I? All right. I'll have to show that to you in another video. Uh, that part's not going to work right. But if I was to create a file here and I was to put some PHP into it, all I have to do is create a file here. It'll turn up in the list. So I will do that much. Oh, I'll close my window. All right. So if I come in here, I'm just going to make a file. Um, where am I? Yeah, text file I'll do in this case. So if I just just that much, I come over here. That document is there. If I want to run that document, I'd want this to be a HTML file instead of a TXT file. But I'd be able to click on it and it will load up whatever information happens to be in that file. Anyhow, that's enough for now. So I will uh, chat with you guys later. Hopefully, this can kind of get you guys on the process of moving a little bit forward with this stuff. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye for now.